So if you can contrast Greyfriars Hall, what we're doing here, um, mm -hmm. with sort of your typical seminary experience, what are some of the pros and cons maybe of both right. the comparisons and contrasts? Right. Um, the first, if I could, I would encourage you to picture it this way. What we're doing in Greyfriars Hall, if if it were up and running and on all cylinders and we had we were doing everything that I would like to do, and then you took a good, faithful, orthodox seminary and you compared them, it would be like a Venn diagram of two circles overlapping. And I think there'd be like an 80% overlap. Uh, if we're doing everything we want to be able to do and they're doing everything they want to be able to do, you'd, you would have... Um, um, you would have that that significant amount of overlap. So consequently, if you, if someone said, "Well, should I do um, should I go to seminary before Greyfriars, or maybe do uh, theological studies at a seminary or grad school after Greyfriars?" I, I would say, "Sure, absolutely." To pick up that twenty uh, yeah. percent, yeah, that'd, that'd be great. Um, and the the thing, the advantage and disadvantage that I would put is the advantage of Greyfriars is that you're doing what you're doing in the environment in which this is going to be done, right? <laughs> right? So you're, you are dealing with actual things as they come up. Mm -hmm. So one of the things in Greyfriars, after, after the students finish their first year of studies and so forth, one of the things that they do in their second year is they start attending elder meetings. They, they, so in Christchurch, we have a weekly elder meeting for an hour and a half. Uh, Thursday morning, 6 a.m. And the Greyfriars come in and sit along the back wall and, and watch the sausage being made. Right. So they, um, so somebody's marriage implodes or, and the elders are dealing with that, or it's a church discipline um, situation, or they're working through a polity issue or some issue with another church in town. Um, there are all kinds of things in that setting that are not going to come up in seminary. Right. Because um, seminary is sort of a, a detached um, operation so that you can really drill deep on, on the things that you are tackling, which might be Hebrew grammar or ancient Near East studies, or you know, you're doing that sort of thing. So um, the advantage of Greyfriars is the small community and the real life uh, ministry training. Um, the advantage there's a, there's a corresponding advantage in a seminary where you can uh, n you can sort of detach from the hurly burly of real regular life, and you can isolate the thing you're studying, and you can get a world class scholar to teach it. You're because you're taking advantage of the division of labor, right? right? So if different churches are training their people, their Hebrew instructor is not going to be top drawer the same way that uh, a name seminary is going to get a big guy to be their Hebrew scholar. So that, that, that would be the, so a guy coming out of seminary might know his Hebrew better, right? right? That, that sort of thing. But having said that, I would, I would want to argue that any church that is doing what a church needs to be doing needs to be able to train the next generation to do it as well or better. Sure. Right. If you can't do that, then you don't know what you're doing. Right. And that learning the Hebrew and, and the Greek are all, they have their place, they have their, um, their priority. Mm -hmm. But in a counseling situation with the marriage that's falling apart or the, right. the, the cancer diagnosis, um, you need to have sort of walked alongside of how right. do I bring these great truths to bear um, on right. the human soul in right. a loving, gentle, helpful, right. yeah. <laughs> helpful manner. Man, in any good seminary, um, and it, so one of the things I want to emphasize here is, is what we are trying to do is a pos is sort of a, a positive thing that we are trying to build and do. And it's not a critical negative attack on the good things that are happening in seminaries. God bless them. And, right. you know, uh, and I can see supplementing and a lot, a lot of our materials come from men who teach in seminaries, you know, so God's got a purpose there, but we're, we're trying to do what we're doing in the context of the local church and not attacking, um, not attacking the seminaries. But in some ways, seminaries are too, as far as training for ministry goes, they can be too tidy because uh, someone graduates from 
college English major. He's 22 years old. He goes to seminary another three years. He comes out 25 years old. And in any good high school, college, and seminary, they're going to carefully gauge the classwork and the class loads and what prerequisites you need. And before you take this course, you need to have taken that course. So if you're studious and and on top of it and are a good little boy, um, you're going to do well because you will have covered the prerequisites before the next thing happens. If you're training for ministry in the, the context of the local church, it appears to me that the Holy Spirit doesn't care about prerequisites at all. <laughs> he says to the 26-year-old pastor, here, handle this. Right. You know, and it's the gnarliest thing that he's ever seen. And he's, you know, there are some sins involved in this that he has to look up in a dictionary. <laughs> what, what's going on? Why are these people here? And God just throws people in the deep end, yeah. right? And, and I'm the one that has to counsel them. And yeah, I, I'm the I, one who has to iron this out. Yeah, the Lord, and that's why Paul says in one place, I think, Lord, uh, you know, who is sufficient for these things? Mm -hmm. And so there's, Greyfriars training is, in that respect, messier. And seminary training is tidier. And seminary training can is therefore cleaner, you know, tidier, cleaner, and you can go deeper in what, what you get, you can get deeper, right? right? Um, but what you're getting in ministerial training in the context of the church is more connected. That's true. To what you're actually going to do. What you're actually going to do. Yeah. Right. It's, good. It's, it's the difference between learning how to cook um, as an apprentice in a, in a world-class kitchen and learning how to cook out of a book, um, you know, sort of by yourself running. You, and you can learn how to do it in both right. instances, but...